Prettyman with the Salt Lake Tribune. We are up here on Deseret Land and Livestock today. As you can see, all this land behind me is, uh, is the property of the Land and Livestock Agency. And uh, we're here to talk about cooperative wildlife management units. Deseret is the largest cooperative wildlife management unit in the state. And we brought Rick Danver along today. He's the wildlife manager up here at Deseret to talk about what Deseret is all about and the hunting opportunities that it presents. Come on in here, Rick. And, Tell us a little bit about Deseret. This is a, quite a beautiful piece of land up here and you got a lot of little creatures running around on it. Yeah, it really is a deep piece of property. It's about, it's about 200,000 private acres. It's owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, and, and it's managed you know, under their agricultural uh, branch. We, we you know, are primarily raising cattle and sheep, but we, we try to do it in a way where we have lots and lots of animals. One of the things we do is we have a, a, a bird watching program, a fishing program, and a wildlife hunting program. We really have a wildlife management program, but part of it is the CWMU program that we're, we've been discussing. And we, we've got a lot of big game animals here. We've got about 2,500 uh, elk, about uh, 2,800 mule deer, 100 moose, and about six, six to 800 pronghorn on the mountain. We, we harvest a percentage of them every year. Harvest about 10% of them a year um, with a, you know, a, a, a good solid quality type of a hunting program uh, that involves public hunters and private hunters. Uh, we're pretty proud of it. What's the percentage on the public and the private hunters? Um, how, and how does that work? About 35% of the people that hunt here um, pay to hunt here. Uh, about 65% drop a permit from the state of Utah they get free access to hunt here. That, I think that's um, contradictory to what a lot of people think about the Cooperative Wildlife Management Program. They think that, um, that you know, 80% or 90% of the program is, is going to, to highest bidders. Um, certainly not the case here, and a lot of that is because you allow a lot of cow elk harvest, uh, doe, deer harvest. Is that, is that why? Right, you know, half of all the pronghorn and half of all the moose go to the public half of the bucks and the does are, pu are public draw and half of them are, are the tags that we get to pick who gets them. And then with the, as you say, with the, we're such a, we're an elk factory here. We have to harvest 300 cow elk a year to keep the population level. And all of those go are free to the public. So when you add up, you know, all the bucks and all the antlerless, it comes out to be 60, about 65% to the public and about 35% that we charge a fee for. Tell me a little bit about the program and, and what it means to you as a, a landowner manager and what it, what it means to the people in this area and what it means to, to the public hunters. It's been a, it's been a really a win-win kind of a program all around. All around. It gives us a nice long season so we can provide lots of quality hunting opportunity here on the ranch. Um, it allows us you know, to be really involved in the wildlife management. I'm a wildlife manager, I'm not so much an outfitter. You know, I'm, I have a real concern about keeping the numbers in balance with what the resource is here and keeping the numbers where they're not going to impact neighbors in a negative way. So we have a, a good relationship through this program with our, with our biologist we, and we can, we can make it fit the, fit the programs. We have good populations of some species that are considered in peril throughout the West. Sage grouse, pygmy rabbits. And we want to make sure that we keep good healthy populations of them. They're, this is their home. And, and, and we feel it's our obligation to help steward those animals. And you know, the money that we make with this, you know, through, through well-planned, ethical, and well-managed hunting allows us the means to do that. Well, you know, hey, this is great. I appreciate it. Let's, uh, let's go look at some of this wildlife. All Thanks right, a lot, sounds Rick. great. driving through some of the best elk country in northern Utah and possibly the state, Deseret Land and Livestock, 
We've seen a couple of elk. I'm hoping to see more as the evening progresses. We stopped to take a little break and talk a little bit about Deseret and what it means to Utah hunters and what it means to the Division of Wildlife. This is Boyd Blackwell. The What's your official title? I'm the uh, uh, Private Lands Public Wildlife Program Coordinator. It's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's hard to tell everybody what I do. So, yeah, yeah. Well, tell us um, what a place like Deseret means to the, you know, the Cooperative Wildlife Management Unit program. It's uh, it's pretty high on the on the scale of, of the best places in Utah to participate in the program. Yes, it really is. Um, as an agency, we feel like the program is is a success because of. Uh, uh, places such as Deseret and, and many of the other 103 CWMUs around the state. Uh, they provide habitat, they provide wildlife uh, for Utah and uh, without some of these uh, who knows what could happen. Uh, a lot of these places could be carved up into cabin lots and and uh, we realized early on that uh, we needed to do something to preserve habitat for Utah and the CWMU program does this. Okay, so uh, the, the, the Cooperative Wildlife Management Unit Program has been around for a while now. Um, have you been able to track any kind of a, a benefit for the herds that are on the fringe of these, that are on the public land? Are you seeing some benefit for the, for the animals that you know, are not on these properties? Sure. Um, you know, it's pretty common that uh, most of the ha good habitat, the excellent habitat actually, um, is private lands. Uh, they also provide over three quarters of the winter range. And uh, when private landowners have an incentive and feel like they're, they can work with wildlife, um, they're, they're willing to accept wildlife, uh, it helps local wildlife populations. And uh, some of them that get really into the wildlife also manage for other species as well, besides the hunted ones. And uh, so their habitats provide for, for many different species of wildlife. But uh, uh, overall, uh, this, the CWMU programs do a great job in providing a, a good habitat for wildlife. Well, let's go see if we can find some more wildlife. The bewitching hour is about here. It's starting to get a little dark, or the sun's going down a little bit. Let's go see if we can find some more animals. Let's Thanks, go. Boyd. You bet, anytime. time.